I got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. Cocaine quarter piece, got war and peace inside my DNA. Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Sean Be Nice back again with another video. Um this one is gonna be like I think a very anticipated video, at least for me anyway. I've been trying to do this video for the longest, but I've been trying to make sure I had everything I wanted to cover, every topic I wanted to go over and discuss. So this video may be long. I'm going to try to keep it under 30 minutes, but if it goes over 30, my apologies. But this battle has been going on for a minute, and I kind of want to put a lot of stuff to bed. Because a lot of people think with iPhones, they are like top of the food chain. And vice versa for Android too, because there are some things the iPhone does better than Android, and there are some things that Android does better than the iPhone. At this point in time, you know, whichever ecosystem that you've already bought into, that's the ecosystem that you're going to stick with. So me personally, I've dealt with I've dealt with an Android for years now versus iPhone. So it's just Galaxy, Samsung happen to be my preferred Android brand that I use. Um, you know, I just, you know, nothing against iPhone. So let's get it started. So the very first thing I want to talk about is Apple Pay versus Samsung Pay. Now, some people may seem like, well, that's kind of like a crazy thing to kind of start the video off with. But nowadays, mobile payments have kind of become like the new wave of the future, if you ask me. Like, especially like the new forms of payments. Now, the reason why it's um, such a big deal is because there's been plenty of times where... Let me turn the brightness up so you guys can kind of just see. There's been times where... I've uh, I've like forgot my wallet somewhere, and there's and I've needed like cash, right? So I was stranded one day. I had my wallet. I had my I had my phone though, so I was able to go to like a Walmart and do debit, Samsung Pay, uh, not Walmart, Walgreens, and I was able to do cash back. Um, so that's because this used MST, and this one only used NFC. Now the difference is MST works for magnetic stripes. NFC only works for special terms that have that little bar, uh, the little symbol that specifies NFC. So if you don't have, um, you know, pretty much, if you're not a terminal, you've got your wallet at home, you're not a terminal that has NFC, then you pretty much screw with an iPhone versus Samsung Pay, you'd be A-OK. -okay. So now the next thing I want to talk about is battery life. Now this seems to be like kind of a hot topic for most people who have smartphones because the thing is, you want to make sure that when you're outside, you don't have to worry about your phones dying on you. That's very important. And I, I definitely understand that, right? So, now with the iPhone, I can definitely say the standby time on this phone is ridiculous, right? Um, if you go to bed at 100% and you wake up, you, you're going to wake up at 100%, very, very least 99%, right? Android, on the other hand, uh, it depends on the kind of phone you have. Now, I know... The Pixel, it, it sometimes have, uh, I know that phone has great standby time, but like most, your typical like Samsung devices, um, those usually, like, I don't know, probably you go to sleep like at three, you wake up at, I don't know, eight or something like that. It's just like a five hour time span. You go to bed or whatever and you wake up. Now, if you went to bed without charging your phone at 100%, you may wake up with like, 95, 94, I'm not going to lie. Uh, on a good day, <laughs> if you like over Wi-Fi or something like that, you may wake up to like 96, 97. Wi-Fi usually performs pretty good on the Samsung devices or Android devices in general, right? So the thing is, on a standby time, may be great on an iPhone, but for me, usage-wise, it kind of sucks. Like if I start using this phone, like just watching media content, just watching videos, browsing, stuff like that, it usually goes down pretty fast versus this guy here, when I'm watching videos and stuff like that, the battery drain is very minimal, right? Even when I'm playing games, especially if I do all the performance mode, the performance mode tricks, it's very, very good, very good as far as stand, uh, as far as actual performance. So you got great standby time over here. You got actual great performance over here. So it's kind of like choose your poison. Uh, next, what the iPhone has over uh, the Android, well, this particular phone here, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, is the dual speakers. Now. Granted, don't get me wrong, the S8 Plus has some good speakers, right? Well, it only has one bottom firing speaker, but it's pretty loud. Versus the iPhone, which has um, dual speakers. You have one here, and you have one at the bottom. So one kind of serves as like the woofer, then one actually kind of kicks out the sound. Um, 
it's pretty loud, but the thing is, when you're watching a video, you have the sound coming directly at you versus the sound firing, firing the other way. So let's do an example of what happened to be on me, right? So let's search a song. You know what? Uh, Y'all gonna laugh at me, but I like this song. So let's search a song. They're gonna play the exact same song so you guys can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Issues. All right. So, now here's the full volume of this one. I'm jealous. I'm overzealous. When I'm down, I get real down. When I'm high, I don't come down. I get angry. So that's that one. Right now, let's do the iPhone. I'm jealous. I'm overzealous. When I'm down. So. Now, the thing is that, you know, in that, in that sound test right there, the video, I mean, the, the audio may sound uh, louder over here, but it's, it's, it's definitely more crispy on the iPhone. I can definitely tell you that right now. Um, so, let's go to the next one. Next topic is going to be, now this may, like I said, I'm trying to go with features that people actually are going to, like, use, right, and actually care about. Now... For me, a feature that is going to kind of, let me kind of get the focus going on here. I don't know what's going on today with my Galaxy camera. All right, so the feature is going to sit there and stand out to me like, uh, it's the screenshot, right? Now, people send screenshots all the time with their phones. Now, you probably think like, well, why is it such a big deal? Well, with a Samsung device, if you have a, you're trying to take a screenshot, right? So let's do, let's do a screenshot. So the new way to do it is uh, hold the power down and volume down. That do it. All right, there you go. Now, with that, I can share it. Well, before it went away, I can share it, edit it, or do whatever I want to do. So if I want to share it, uh, it's gone. But anyway, yeah, okay. See, if I wanted to share it, I got different ways I can share it, right? And they have like kind of my immediate contacts I've been contacting, right? So I got, you know, my, my iPhone and a couple of other people. But I can share it right there, no problem, right? So that's one cool thing. Versus the iPhone, if I take a screenshot right now, which I think is this way. Screenshot, right? But now I have to go into photos, find a screenshot, and then find a contact I'm trying to send it to. So it, it's just kind of like a convenience thing. That may be petty, but to me, uh, that make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm trying to send a quick screenshot or something, that makes a difference to me. All right. So next topic that we're gonna talk, uh, that we're gonna go over is iPhone's 3D Touch. Now, yes, Samsung and every other Android phone that has Android 7.0 and 7.1 has this feature. But it's not implemented quite as well as um, 3D Touch. So, for example, with 3D Touch, if I want to send a, a text message real quick, hold that now, and boom, I can just go ahead and send that message real fast, right? Or hit new me or hit <laughs> or hit new message, right? So uh, now here they have a, something like a 3D Touch, but like, if you hold it down, right? These are the options that you get. You can remove shortcut app info. Uh, select multiple items, da da da. It's not, you know what I mean. It's no, it's nowhere close to like 3D touch. So that's that's not the the same thing. Um, another thing, as far as like 3D touch is concerned, is the home button. Now, I've discussed this in other videos as far as like tips and tricks with the Galaxy, but the home button on the iPhone it actually feels like a button. It's not. It's just. It's just glass, right? And I don't know how they did that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Apple for that, but it feels like an actual button. Now, this has a button-like feature, too, if you press down hard on it. But the haptic feedback is totally different, right? You actually feel like you're pressing a real button on this one versus this one. Um, it, it doesn't feel quite as good, I guess you would say. Right? So, uh, let's see. Now, this is another cool thing, which I wish 3D Touch would kind of implement. Now, as you can see, I have a Snapchat. Yeah, come on. There we go. I have a Snapchat uh, 
you know, a message, whatever, right? I got some type of message in there. Now, if this is annoying me, I don't want to see this, I can hold this down, hit clear badge, and it's gone, right? Versus here, you know, if I if I hold it down, I just get another option. I can't clear the badges, you know what I'm saying? Like, people who definitely want to kind of like, who tired of looking at all those numbers as far as their email is concerned. I kind of keep mine as clean, so I don't have that problem, but you, you know what I mean. Uh, now, another thing that I rock with heavy, especially on uh, at least the S8, is like a call reminder. Um, I'm not going to call myself right now, but the thing is, I'm going to see if I got a, a screenshot for you guys I can show you. So, um, as you can see, I can, you know what I'm saying, add a reminder to call this person back. You know what I'm saying? I can call them back right now or I can mess them. This is just a screenshot from, you know, when I took it, uh, when I got a call or whatever. But uh, that's a pretty dope feature. You know what I'm saying? So, if you get a missed call, that's that's something to do, that's, you know what I'm saying, that Samsung has. So, that's another feature that you guys may find pretty nifty. At least, I do. I think that is a pretty dope feature, especially... If you're somebody who for kind of forget to do stuff like that, you know, to call somebody back, that's something that you can kind of keep in mind. All right. All right. Next point is going to be where are we at on our notes? Uh, notifications. Now, notifications to me is a big thing. So let's see. If I right now the phone is off. Let me see. I want to send myself a text message. So let's send. Myself a message, blah 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 blah. All right, okay, send it, send it. All right, there you go. Send myself a message. So now it's on do not disturb, but it should still do it. It should anyway. Okay, why don't we turn do not disturb off? Where you at? Here you go. All right. So, let's try to send another message. Now, the cool thing about Android devices is if I have a notification or message or whatever, I have an LED to let me know that, hey, and it's in different colors. And the cool thing about Android, you can set the colors to which you want your notification to be. So, for example, like Snapchat, you, know, you have to download an app for it, but like for Snapchat, um, it's either yellow, you know, if you got Google Hangouts, it'd be green, Facebook, it'd be blue, or regular text, it'd be blue. Now, if I send myself a message on the iPhone, right? If I send myself a message on the iPhone, uh, besides the fact it's going to vibrate, you know what I mean? But if I'm not paying attention to my phone, there's nothing to indicate that I have a message, right? There's nothing saying, hey, Sean, you might want to pick up your phone. I mean, obviously, if I do like this, It'll do it, but other than that, it's not. There's no real indication other than me to pick up my phone. To me, a notification like on an iPhone will go like a long way versus somebody being to pick up your phone. And uh, if you don't have the privacy thing going, being a 3D touch and send whatever text message they want. So for iPhone users, just kind of keep that in mind. If you don't have a privacy on your iPhone, somebody pick up your phone. If they 3D touch, if they 3D touch, they uh, they can respond to your message. But I even put the code in. Like I said, you gotta have that uh, privacy on. So. That's just something to keep in mind. Also, with Samsung devices, we have always on display. Now, always on display is also a dope feature. I'm going to turn it on right now. I usually have it turned on at a certain time, but um, as you can see, these are different things that you can have for always on display. Uh, for y'all, for those who don't know what always on display is, it should be pretty self-explanatory. So, if I turn my phone off right now. Um, it's gonna it's gonna have a, a pretty much like a little display telling me what time it is. If I had any notifications, battery life. Right now, it's like a screenshot. So anything in my notification bar up here is gonna be right here. On, always on display. So if I like double tap right there, you know I gotta see. I got my watch by me, so I shouldn't have to swipe open. Okay, there you go. I'm go. It gonna take me right to the screenshot. So that's a pretty dope feature to have. Um, like I said, that's something that's not. On an iPhone, I don't know why. I mean, I mean, I don't know why because you know, Sam, Apple is Apple and Samsung is Samsung. So each one, each platform gonna have a different way to do things, which is cool. But whatever. Uh, now another thing I kind of wish um, Apple would kind of do with a 3D touch is gonna be like the the toggles. Right now they do have like a notification center. It's not really similar to me as far as Android is concerned. 
Um, but right now, if I pull this up and I try to like 3D touch on it, nothing's going to happen, right? I mean, besides the fact that I got to turn it off, but you can't 3D touch to actually take you into the menu, which is kind of retarded. Now, if you 3D touch on settings, you can do that real quick, but, but us on Samsung devices, we have, if we hit like the, the, the name of the thing or whatever, boom, it, it brings up our different uh, Wi-Fi settings, and then if we hit details right here, it takes a right. It takes us right into it. Uh, that, to me, that that should not be that hard for Apple to like kind of implement some type of 3D touch functionality for the control center. For you to, for me to be able to hold that down and take me right into my Wi-Fi and look at look at the other Wi-Fi um, networks around me should not be that hard. So that's something to consider too. That may that may be kind of minuscule, y'all, but to me that's a big thing. Cause like I said, I've been using that for the longest, so. That's why it's such a big thing to me. Um, now, another topic is going to be charging time. Now, Samsung has what they call fast charging, and they also have fast wireless charging. Now, for anybody who's never used a wireless charger, don't call it a gimmick until you've used it. See, me, I have a wireless charger at my desk at work. I have a wireless charger uh, in my bedroom. So when I come home, I got to set my phone on it, and boom, I don't have to worry about nothing else. It's charging versus, and it's on fast charge too, versus here, I gotta plug it up, but if I don't have an iPad charger, this phone charged incredibly slow. I've never seen a phone charge this slow, which is crazy because Samsung actually has a bigger battery than an iPhone. So Samsung has a 3,500 milliamp hour battery versus 2,900 on the iPhone. It should not take that long to charge. I think I left this thing on a charger for like three hours one day and I came home and it still wasn't charged. I don't know if it's the cable or what, but <laughs> it should not take that long to charge your phone, yo. And the thing is, when I plugged it up, it wasn't even at 0%. It was like at 30%. So you're telling me it took three hours to get from 30% to 91%? No, that's that's unacceptable. I don't, no, that's, no. Now, another thing that iPhone users cannot deny, they can say, they can try to argue and say it's on certain carriers, but signal strength for some odd reason is totally different on Galaxy devices versus iPhone devices. Anybody who owns an iPhone and sit there, they can honestly tell you, unless they're lying to themselves, that the sig the same signals that we get on the Galaxy, they do not get on that iPhone. Like I can be in an area where my signal is awesome and I'm getting blazing 4G versus if my fiance has her phone, she she never has like real five bars or like sometimes I've noticed that if you cover this part up, like if you're holding a phone like this, sometimes it'll do it, it didn't do it this time, but it'll actually drop a bar. Cause I'm guessing, you know, the antenna lines are right here. So, I mean, that makes sense, but still that, I don't know. I don't know why I, ever since I had the iPhone 4S, that's been a problem for me, especially like as far as mobile is concerned, like as far as the 4G, I never have had like a fast iPhone as fast as an Android phone, as far as like, you know, mobile data is concerned or browsing and stuff like that. Plus this is the first phone, um, that actually supports a thousand gigabyte LTE. Right, iPhone still doesn't. Uh, I don't think the new iPhone is going to support that as well. I'm, I'm not 100 percent showing that, but don't quote me. But I just don't think it is. Uh, now let's get to the obvious thing. <laughs> you can kind of just look and tell by just by looking at these phones right now. Is the display? Samsung the S8 Plus display is crazy good, crazy, crazy, crazy good. And I'm trying to get to max brightness. Sometimes Samsung be tripping with that, but this is the max brightness. Look at that, Joe. Viewing angles, crazy, curved display, no bezels. I mean, this wallpaper is making it look better too. But other than that, y'all, like, this display is crazy. This is a 2K display. Now, can No one in their right mind can argue and sit there and say, uh, you know, our, our display is not killing the game. They can't. You know what I'm saying? Samsung SA Plus display, out of this world. And I know some people say, well, I can't notice the difference between 1080p and 2K. If you... If you own a Samsung interface, trust me, you're going to notice the difference. Because when I look at this phone, it just doesn't look as crispy. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad. And, you know, I'm not uh, part of the Pixel Poxy, the Pixel Posse, nothing like that. Because I can sit there and tell you, yeah, this phone has 530 some PPI versus this phone having like 401 PPI, blah, blah, blah. But just from looking at the phones, you can obviously tell that the, the Samsung phone display is 10 times better than this display. They've won numerous awards for their displays. They win pretty much every year for having the best displays. Um, it's HD already. I mean, you come on now. Like, that's that's really, that's no contest. You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing iPhone using kind of stop on. Uh, next thing I'm gonna talk about is, since we kind of on the topic of display, is VR support. 
For those who've never used the VR, don't say it's corny or it's lame until you have used it. Anyone that I've shown or that I've introduced the Samsung VR to, absolutely love it. It's a great way to pass the time by, especially if you're in the airport, you get the laundromat. If you're doing something, you just kind of like chilling around the house or you just kind of bored. VR is really, really fun. The fact that this phone supports it, a mobile phone can kind of put you in a whole different environment. It's crazy. That's very, 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 very dope. Very, yeah, very dope feature. Um, next thing is a feature that I don't think a lot of iPhone users, people use. I don't know why. To me, it's a very dope feature because it's kind of similar to Android Beam. Now, anybody who knows who has Android Beam, pretty much you tap each other's phone and you can send a file. So if I had another Android device here, pretty much all I have to do is tap the back of the phone, hit what I'm trying to send, and boom, it'll send it right, you know what I'm saying, that fast. Um, it's very similar to uh, AirDrop. I don't know why a lot of people, like a lot of my iPhone users, people like, they don't even use it with each other. I don't think they even know about that feature, but AirDrop is dope. So if you turn this on, you turn your Bluetooth on, your other person who has another iPhone turn their Bluetooth on, whatever you're trying to send them, you could just send it to their phone like quick, fast, and hurry. I'm talking about it's it's almost instant. Like for an AirDrop, it's dope. So AirDrop and, and uh, Android Beam is very, very similar, y'all. So that's something for all my Android users who didn't know that iPhone probably had that. Uh, something similar to Android Beam, they do. It's it's quite dope. Uh, build quality. Now, <laughs> this is kind of based off perspective. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because honestly, if it's it's up to you, right? Now, when people look at the iPhone, they be like, yo, the build quality is dope. You know what I'm saying? It's got the dual camera. You got the Apple logo on the back. Some people, when they hold, when they have an iPhone, they just think that you know they have the best phone ever made, ever created, and the best looking phone. Now, that used to be the case back, I don't know, maybe when the iPhone 5 was out. But uh, I even say the iPhone 6. But even still, some Android phones is kind of picking up their build quality. Because you got the HTC M7, which picked up their build quality and it was dope. But when you have phones like the S6, the X6 Edge Plus, the Note 7, the, S8, uh, the S7 Edge, now you have this phone. Build quality, you guys can kind of like, to me, y'all can y'all lose in that category. This phone... Excuse me, it's absolutely gorgeous. You cannot sit there and tell me that this phone does not look better than that phone. For the simple fact that this is a 6.2 inch screen, this is a 5.5 inch screen. This phone has a bigger screen than this phone, but it's actually, as you can see, I can still almost fit this phone on this phone. Look how much of look how much room is left over. Right? Now they almost like they're pretty much close to being the same height. The Samsung got like a like Barely an inch over it, but look how much of that is left over. Like, this feel, I can touch my finger. I can't do that here. Right? I activated Duo. Close off. I can't do that here. You know what I'm saying? I can easily touch my finger here. Barely do it there. So, it's, it's, a, it's a huge difference, yo. Like, like I said, the whole, you know, uh, the whole argument that Apple phones just look better, y'all can kind of dead down the water now. Like I said, most Android phones are... And you don't even have to pay top dollar to get a quality Android looking phone. You got phones like the Huawei P10, uh, you know, the Exxon 7, uh, the OnePlus 3T, uh, you know, and these just phones are kind of at the top. I mean, and those are high quality built phones and they look, and you know what I'm saying, for a fraction of the price of both of these phones. So that's kind of dead too. Now, let's talk about cameras, right? Because most people who own iPhones just think, their cameras are the best cameras in the world. And it's and it's mainly because Snapchat out here fooling these people, y'all. Snapchat, the thing is, Snapchat is not as optimized for Android as it would be for iPhone, right? So with Android, you have multiple phones running an operating system and they're not all running the same specs versus iPhone. Every iPhone, you know, that's all got an A ten chip, um, the exact same camera, uh, you know, you know, and whatever as far as far as specs is concerned, versus Android, since it's such an open platform. You have different um, phones using different uh, camera sensors, different um, chipsets, and everything like that. So it's kind of hard to optimize something specifically uh, for a, a certain Android device, unless you know you you know we got the Galaxy apps, which is optimized for Galaxy. Um, but other than that, the whole camera thing, Samsung has been winning the camera awards so I think in like two years now, as far as like uh, the DX Mark. The, the testers, whoever touched the cameras. Once again, Samsung has won, besides the Pixel, 
they went on the phone and got the highest rated cameras uh, on the market. So, you know, as far as these having like the best cameras, don't get me wrong, Apple has a wonderful camera. Both of these cameras are gonna do you well just for point and shoot. So if you had a wedding, wherever you were, you outside, you can pull both of these cameras out and be confident in your shot. This is this comparison video is gonna let people know, like, you know, like I said, a lot of people are not aware of how far how far Android have come, especially in the camera department, because back in the day, Android cameras used to be horrible. But the Samsung camera, top notch. You know what I'm saying? Top, top notch. Uh, that's you know, that's that's kind of dead. So we can kind of let that go. Um, another thing that is kind of dumb, so let's let's open up the camera, right? Now, if I want to change something in my camera settings real quick. Open up the camera, I go to settings, and I change whatever I need to change. And I hit back, and I'm ready back to my shot. That's not the case of the iPhone, and that kind of annoyed me when I when I purchased this phone. That's why this phone's actually going back. Um, when you open up the camera, now, let's say if I want to go to a video, I'm like, you know what, I actually want to shoot this video in 4K, or I want to scale it down to 1080p. You hit this, you would think like, oh man, maybe I can change the settings right here. No, you, you don't. You actually have to go into settings, it's, and it's kind of buried a little bit too. You actually have to go into settings, um, and let me see if I can actually find it. Is it in here? Photo of the camera. Yeah, and then you have to change it in here, and then you have to you could double tap and go back here. But it's kind of like, why not just put those settings in your camera app? That that's retarded to me. That that makes no sense at all. Um, camera audio, as far as recording videos to concerned. Um, most of you guys who watch my video has already, yep, you guys already noticed the difference. Camera audio, for some odd reason, I think because it's, the iPhone uses a monotone speaker, uh, or just one speaker, for guys who don't know what mono is, you should, but, <laughs> a mono speaker you record, so when you're recording, it sounds very low, I'm always sounding far away, versus on my Galaxy camera, um, you kind of hear everything is full, it's, it's rich, you, you know what I'm saying, it's a, it's a totally different thing. Um, that's, you know, that's as far as the audio is concerned. Now, one thing iPhone is kind of killing the game with, at least until Samsung catch up, and this is one point that the iPhone does have over the Samsung uh, versus the other points it already has, is the dual camera, right? Now, the reason why the dual camera is so dope is because if I open the camera settings, right? And you can even do this, you can even do this with, you know, if you're recording a video, which is dope too. But let's just say I want to kind of get um, a better shot, a better angle, or a closer view on the Samsung. If I hit this button right here, look how much closer I get without really losing any quality. That's that's a dope feature. I don't know. I know why Samsung couldn't put on the S8 Plus this year because of the issue they had with Synaptics, and they were trying to put the fingerprint screen. I mean, the fingerprint kind of under screen, but they couldn't, so it kind of had to change the whole build around. But still, like I said. That's a point that I, that's something that the Galaxy does not have that the iPhone does have. So, um, what else? So most people now, most people think Siri. Anybody who own an iPhone, they think Siri is like the gods of all. You know, as far as um, voice assistants, like we we can stop that right now. You know what I'm saying? So let's see. We can actually try to put that to the test a little bit. So now, one thing that iPhone, I mean, the Galaxy, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus has is like right now. Let's go to, let's see if I go to the internet page. Make sure I ain't got nothing on here too foul, too ratchet for y'all, for y'all be talking about me. Uh, let's go. Let's try to find a movie I was watching that day, right? So I was watching Drifter on Netflix. Uh, don't waste your time. Uh, all right. So. If I wanted to kind of get some more information, I mean, all the information here, obviously, but if I hold this down, and I hit what's on my screen, it's gonna pull up other information about it. It's gonna um, pull up another movie that's, I guess, similar to that, you know, to that, whatever here, it doesn't have that. You know what I mean? It's, it just don't. So let's just kind of give it a, a test, because I think, because I know the Google Assistant kind of works off contextual clues. So for example, if I say, yo, how tall is Barack Obama? They tell me the height. And then if I say, well, how old is he? It also tell me his age. So let's see. How tall is Barack Obama? Barack Obama is six feet one inch tall. Barack Obama's height is six feet zero point eight. How old is he? The answer is fifty five years old. Months, twenty eight days. 
Okay, Siri, after killing the game with the whole 8-1-20, I mean, I, I didn't need all that. You could have just said, he, you know, I didn't need all that. But, uh, <laughs> Siri kind of went, you know, so I guess they know I'm doing it. She know I'm doing a comparison, so she's trying to show out. But, uh, I'm saying, they Google Assistant did give me his birthday. I didn't ask that either, but either way, uh, both are still pretty well, like I said. But Google Assistant just has a little bit more tricks up his sleeve than Siri. Uh, Siri just trying to show out today. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Siri, though. That was... A little stalkerish. Um, another thing is um, that's pretty dope about just as far as you know, what I'm saying ecosystem concern. Um, if you if you purchase an app, clear this out. If you purchase an app on uh, in the Google Play Store, right? And let's just say you didn't want that app no more, or like you know, what I'm saying you like you bought the app. I was like, hey, that's not you know, it's not what I thought it was. As long as it's not media like movies and stuff like that. You can get a refund with the 15 minutes. That would never happen on iPhone. We can go ahead and leave that alone. That's not even something we even got to discuss about, you know, as far as um, which one's better. Now, don't get me wrong. The App Store, you know, since we kind of on the, the, the whole discussion of um, apps are concerned or whatever, the App Store is buttery smooth. You know what I'm saying? It got um, a lot, a lot of apps that you can use. And, and, you know, some of the apps, pretty much, if not all the apps, are just better on iOS because of the optimization. So... I'm not even gonna stun on that. You know, the optimization on iOS is good job, Apple on that. Um, but the real reason why I don't really kind of I, you know, I can kind of deal with great apps versus excellent apps because of this is just keep it a hundred because of the pirate and things that we got going on here. So I can pull up. Let me go ahead and go to it, Cody. Now anybody who has the Amazon Fire Stick knows about Cody and they know how to. You know what I'm saying? Set it up. Now with the Amazon Fire Stick, you gotta uh, you gotta hack into it. Versus Android, I don't have to do that, yo. I don't. And here's X's. This is everything I use to watch my movies. Um, and it was a quick, simple step. All I did was I downloaded this app right here, installed what installed Exodus to Cody, open it up, and boom, it's right there. We also got ways if you know what I'm saying. We find like if, say if it's a song, we just can't find it, Google Play Music or Apple Music. Um, we can actually get the link from the, from the YouTube web link. Go to YouTube MP3 download or converter. Excuse me. Download it straight directly to our phone, and we had that song with no problem. You know what I'm saying? If we wanted to, we could download the MP4. We actually download the whole video and have it on our phone as well. You know what I mean? That's just, that's cute, honey. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who owns an Android device knows that we are like keen as far as like free stuff is concerned. Now, people sit there and try to make the argument, well, that's why you guys always get viruses, da da da. Anybody who has an actual uh, up-to-date Android device that gets regular updates, you know, like this up-to-date with Android 7.0, 7.1, hell. Um, so if you download all your apps from the Google Play Store, you're not going to have those issues. I mean, uh, anything can be hacked. I don't, I don't care what you guys say. iPhone's been hacked before. Uh, you know, let's not forget about the fapping. So let's not act like iPhone is just like the cleanest thing ever iOS never gets hacked, da da da. Come on now, we can we can quit that. Cause there's a lot of celebrities who had they thing thing out on the web, so we can kind of put that to rest. Um, I'm trying to. This video is getting kind of way like way long, but I'm trying to cover everything that because a lot of people just don't know about Android devices no more because they've been used to using iPhone. They just don't know how many cool features that Samsung phones have and Android devices have in general because. They don't, a lot of people don't deep dive into their phone, you know what I mean? But most Android users are pros at what they do, so they know all the features of their phone already. This video is kind of more so for people who are thinking about switching, who don't know a lot about Samsung phones and what they can do, and it's just kind of like putting them up on game right now. Um, another feature is low power saving mode. Now, yes, um, iPhone does have low power saving mode, which is good. You know, it's your, it's your basic low power saving mode, but... On an Android phone, if you are running low on battery, right? He's, here's the options you have. Now, right now, just on just on what I'm doing right now, you know, with my phone full brightness and uh, you know, it's on it's on 2K. I can I'm gonna get like 15 hours and nine minutes on this battery, right? Now, if I on this feature here, I turn. Let's see, so you guys can see it. On this feature here, uh, if I downscale the screen to 720p, decrease the brightness by 10%, uh, limit the CPU, cut off background network usage, cut off always on display, I'm gaining another plus four hours and 50 minutes, right? 
Now, let's see, if you're going to take it a step further, you're going to be outside for a long time. You can't find a charger. You can put it on max. Now, this pretty much turns your phone into like a, a black because AMOLED is a very good for not using any battery, really. They have a black wallpaper. So it pretty much turns your, it blacks your phone out. They downscales your resolution uh, HD, 720p, I mean, all the other features I talked about. But you're gaining an extra 39 hours and 41 minutes, yo. That is a lifesaver. There's been plenty of times where I did not have a charger by me. And I was outside at a bar with my friends. And I'm like, oh, my phone finna die. I only had 10%. And I would be out for like another four hours. When I get home, after using it, texting, you know, doing what I got to do. I come home and I have like 8% after turning that mode on. So, Matt, like low power saving mode on Samsung device, <laughs> killing the game. It's, it's definitely helpful, especially if your, you know, your battery running low. Versus here, you turn on low, low power saving mode, you know, it helps, but it doesn't help. You guys seen how much of a difference it made. Um, so security uh, is great on both devices. Not you know this kind. Of, this is like the last topic, guys. We almost done. Security is great on both devices. Uh, they both have fingerprint scanner. Both are fast. But with the Samsung device, you have a lot more features as far as unlocking your phone. Right. So if you have a Samsung watch, uh, they have um, smart smart unlock. So if my phone recognizes that I'm by my watch, it's it's not gonna lock. Right. It it is stay unlocked. Uh, but the moment my phone goes away from my watch a certain distance, then it will lock up. And a person either needs my eyeball, <laughs> um, a whole picture of my face, if, if, I, if I have face scan on, um, my fingerprint or my, my, or my pen, right? So I don't know about y'all. I don't know a lot of people who just walk around with my picture in their pocket like that and a full blown up portrait mode where they can hold it up to my phone and get it. Or I don't know how many people can just run around and snatch my eyeball out to unlock my phone. So versus here, I mean, you know, if somebody running against your phone, they chop your finger off. They, you know, they end. I don't know. That's kind of extreme, I know, but you see where I'm going with this, right? Uh, security, you know what I'm saying, as far as the lockdown features are concerned, lockdown mode is great on this phone. Uh, you have a lot of different options, too. Um, I like your phone. Like I say, even if I'm at home, if my phone recognizes that I'm at home, that I'm at home, it will stay unlocked. The moment I leave my building, uh, it's going to lock because it's going to say, if I don't have my watch on, it's going to say, okay, he's not at this location no more, so let me go ahead and lock this phone up. So, awesome. We also have remote wipe, just like find my iPhone. There's plenty of apps that both phones can use for that, so that's not something exclusive to Apple no more. Um, last thing, uh, no, I'm sorry, two more things, right? So, you got iMessage and FaceTime for iPhone, and for Android, what people don't know about is... Like I discussed in my tips and tricks video, but just in case you guys haven't watched it, we got Duo and if I can find it, because I already haven't been using it too much. But we got Android Messaging. Now, like I said, Android Messaging and Duo are directly competing with iMessage and FaceTime, right? Uh, you can send crazy gifts on an iPhone, you can send crazy gifts on your Android phone. You want to call somebody, um, actually with better quality, Duo has way better quality than FaceTime, especially for mobile data. Uh, Duo is actually compatible with iOS too. So if I call someone from my Android phone, not only would they get a, uh, you know, not only could they accept the call, obviously, but they have a feature on, on Duo called Knock Knock. So that person can see what I'm doing before I actually call, you know what I'm saying, before they actually answer the phone. And they can, they can, you know what I'm saying, the term if they want to pick up or not. So if they're like in a meeting or something, they see that I'm being goofy, obviously they don't want to answer. They say they can turn me over, you know, just turn the phone over so they don't have to see my goofy face. You know what I mean? So that's versus if I was like crying in an emergency or something like that, they can like, okay, let me go ahead and answer this call. Um, last thing, obviously, you know, customization is a, is a big thing. Right now, as you guys can see, I kind of got my calendar over here. I can set, you know, set, set my icons up. If I want to take this here and, and uh, move it, whatever I want to move it, I can do that. Uh, but for some odd reason, iPhone has pretty much kept this same born system since pretty much the iPhone 3G. And it's like, if I want to take an app, right? Okay, hold on. If I want to take an app and I want to move it right here, because maybe this is the app I access the most, so I just want to kind of keep it right next to the studio, I can't do it. And on top of that, I can't even put these apps in alphabetical order, which to me is dumb. Like... I don't like my apps all scattered over like that. That drives me crazy. And you guys are kind of, you know, Apple doesn't offer any other methods um, to do that. And I, don't, I just don't like that. You know, like, st don't force me to do what you want. Android, you never had a problem. However you want to set your phone up with different launchers. You know, if I want to double tap to open my screen up, if I want to double tap to get the Google Now, I have that option. You know, like, so 
That's that's a no-brainer. Um, now, before I end the video, the last, last thing that drives me up the wall in which I cannot use an iPhone, and you guys probably going to find this petty, is this phone here relies on Wi-Fi too much. And what I mean by that is, if I'm trying to download a huge file, it won't let me do it unless I'm around Wi-Fi. So if a file is over 100 megs, it won't let you download it. Now, if you guys can bypass that all the way around that, please let me know in the comment section. But I was trying to uh, update an app, and it was like, can't do it unless you have Wi-Fi. Um, I was trying to download the update for this phone. Can't do it because I don't have Wi-Fi. When I'm trying to upload a video to YouTube, depending on how long it's going to take, uh, besides the fact that when you upload stuff, this is another thing, if you upload something like the YouTube or you got something running in the background, Android offers you a progress bar in the notification slider. This does not. I don't know that to me that's dumb because there's been plenty of times where I actually exited out of something while it was like downloading and it would stop the download. I have to redo it, you know, redo the whole thing versus here. Like if I edit a video on my phone, uh, it's it, it'll still be down in the background. I can still do what I want to do. It is, and it'll let me know how much time I got left for notification bar. Same thing with charging. If I'm charging my phone up, it'll let me know how much time I have until my phone is fully charged. Um, versus here, you plug it up, you just like, man, I hope it gets something, you know what I'm saying, somewhere soon, but you don't know. Versus here, you know exactly how long it's going to take for your phone to charge up. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm sorry for making this video so long, I, but it, there were a lot of topics I wanted to discuss and kind of debunk as far as, you know, which phone is better. Obviously, from all the points that I gave you, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus is better than the iPhone 7 Plus. Granted, granted, disclaimer, this phone came out last year, so the iPhone, uh, the new iPhone that comes out this year was going to be the iPhone Edition or the iPhone 8, whatever they're going to name it. It may kill this phone, but then again, the Note 8 drop in, so, you know, it still may be behind. But other than that, Samsung S8 Plus is obvious winner here. It's a no-brainer. Um, I recommend this phone to anybody, especially people who come in from Apple, you know what I mean? This phone is very, very fast. It don't lag. You don't have crazy glitches and stuff like that happening. Um, it'll be a very fun phone for you to, to use, especially coming from the iPhone. Um, <laughs> and this should be an obvious winner right here. Headphone jack. I can't tell you how many times I've been outside or I've been in my car or my desk. I'm like, oh man, my phone about to die. So let me go ahead and plug my headphones up so I can finish watching this movie. And I can plug my headphones up. If you don't have that adapter, you screw. I don't know why, you know, Af Apple said he took away because of... Wait, I'm going to get the air quotes. Courage. Um... But that makes no sense. If they if they try to make the argument because they're trying to make the phone more waterproof, kill that. This is the IP68. This is IP67. This phone has a higher rating of waterproof, quote unquote, I'm sorry, water resistance versus this phone here. And it, and it still has a headphone jack, yo. Like, this, there's no excuse for that. So, that's it. Uh, didn't want to make the video too long, guys. But I kind of want to make sure I went over every point so you guys can kind of know uh, which phone will fit your needs the best. Um... Now, as far as the gaming aspect, so this, as far I can tell you guys right now, uh, for you, those who are still interested in the, the comparison video of this here, that's it. Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus is the clear winner. Now, these are for all my gaming folks, for those who subscribe to my uh, to watch me game. I did just get the NIO DLC pack. Um, I will be uploading some videos of that probably sometime this week, probably over the weekend, because it's easy for me to upload videos over the weekend. I didn't forget about that. So make sure you guys tune in. It's going to be uh, streaming directly from my PS4 Pro. So if you guys like seeing me die, I mean, I'm pretty decent in IO, but not the best. But if you guys like seeing me die, trust me, tune in and you will see that. Um, other than that, that's it, yo. Um, rate, comment, subscribe. Um, also, give me feedback. I love when you, my subscribers do that. There's some people who give me feedback on my videos, which help me out a lot. It helps me grow. Uh, if you didn't like the video, give it, you know what I'm saying? Give a thumbs down, you know? I'm not I'm not scared of a thumbs down. I'm not gonna hurt my thumbs or nothing like that. So it's your boy Sean be nice. Thanks for watching. And I'm out.